live from Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q, covering IBM Insight 2015, brought to you by IBM. Now your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to IBM Insight, everybody. This is theCUBE. We're wrapping up day two. I love the fact that we're ending with a practitioner. Andrew Juarez is here. He's an enterprise architect at Coca-Cola Bottling, company consolidated. Andrew, thanks very much for helping us close out theCUBE. Two days of IBM Insight. Appreciate you being here. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. So Thank how's the event been for you? I mean, you come to events like this, you talk to peers, you learn things. What, what have you taken away? So a lot of times when I come to these events, um, I spend a lot of time with, um, uh, doing actually speaking. So I had a session yesterday that I did um, dealing with SAP and DB2. And then I talk a lot, lot to customers. I work with the IBM folks and I give my reference information about how we're doing on DB2. Um, so I, I spend a lot of time talking to different companies. So talk about your role as an enterprise architect. What does that entail? So right now it, it's a new role that I just took on. Um, Prior to that, I got 17 years experience SAP, database administration um, basis. So as the new role, I'm staking, taking a step higher up and taking a look at all the applications that the company's running. So as Coca-Cola Bottling Company, you know, we're in charge of making the, making the product, delivering the product, and making the sales. So all the technology that goes into the people that are out there selling, um, taking the orders, um, the truck drivers, making sure they're in the right place, the packaging, the warehouses. So all that technology now is kind of uh, my realm now. So I've, I've kind of taken a bigger step up. <coughs> yeah, so are, are, are you looking to simplify that technology stack? A lot of companies now are looking at, at you know, re-architecting, moving some stuff to the cloud, reducing the number of applications they use. We, you have campaigns like, uh, campaign we, like we, that? We do, as a matter of fact, I've just spent last week in meetings um, talking about enterprise content management. So we have uh, dispersed uh, solutions. We have solutions that are actually uh, no longer going to be supported here by the end of the year. Um, we have, our, our business has been growing, so our buildings, they've been kind of moving people around. So we still have stuff that's on in files located on paper. Yeah. So we are, trying to synergize on an enterprise content uh, management system, and that's what exactly we're doing. We want to retire a bunch of stuff and replace it with maybe one or two core pieces, um, and we're looking at uh, utilizing the cloud for some of that stuff. So, I'm not qualified to do your job, but if I were suddenly qualified to do your job, one of the first thing I would want to do is really understand the business. You were sort of describing right. the different parts of the business. And then one of the other things I'd want to do is understand the application portfolio that support those business right. processes. So you've, I'm sure, taken a look at that. You probably had some familiarity with it before this, this role. That's probably why they put you in this job. Can you describe the application portfolio that you're sort of helping you know, and that, continue and, and, to evolve. And that's, and that's going to be part of my job. A big, a big part of my job, right, is to delve into the portfolio. So I'm coming into it with, um, uh, how can I say this politely? So the, the person before really wasn't doing maybe what they should have. And so I'm kind of having to start from ground. Um, there's some stuff that uh, has not been looked at for quite a while. Our portfolio, I mean, our portfolio, like for example, on the hardware side, um, we're pretty much an IBM shop, hardware-wise. Um, we also run um, Intel, so we've got uh, we run a lot. Of, we've got a mainframe, we've got AIX, we've got Intel, VMware. So we're pretty much 98% virtualized. Um, AIX is our core operating system for our Unix stuff. We uh, run a lot of Microsoft stuff. We run. Um, um, a lot of IBM software, um, but then we also have a lot of dispersed things, things that are homegrown. Um, our big applications are SAP applications, um, and we run our uh, Manugistics for our uh, demand planning. Um, that's that's our one of our bread and butters right so, there. So is the objective to, um, well you got a lot of objectives I'm sure, 
you want to get maximum value out of that application portfolio, right. and the way you do that is you support the business processes, right. and, and, and the, but you want to be efficient as well. Um, so is there, or have you in the past gone through a rationalization exercise? Is that something that's on your we, plate? We are actually going through that right now. So um, one of the things that the Coca-Cola industry as a whole is going through in North America is a consolidation um, across the U.S. And one of that, what that consolidation is looking at standardizing an IT platform. So um, the main Coca-Cola company in Atlanta has come up with one platform that they'd like the bottlers to come onto. So it provides us for economy of scale, it provides us with um, common metrics across all the bottlers, um, it'll help uh, streamline our supply chain. Um, so our bot uh, us included, all the bottlers, have been migrating to that, to that system. So that system will probably run about 70% of our business. So we're taking a lot of dispersed systems, moving them into that. We've been, like I said, we've been doing that now maybe a year and a half to two years. The project will probably go on for another two years to get us completely on it. And then at the end, we'll probably have about 20 to 30% of the systems that we need to figure out. What are we going to do with these? Yeah, do you let them just you know, I mean, die here's, a slow here's life? Here's the kind of story we don't hear a lot about at a conference like this because people have come and talk about you know, the big picture, the big opportunities. And, but really, I mean, you are so representative of, of big companies, big legacy infrastructure deal with a lot of simplification problems that, that, you're, that you're wrestling with. Um, what kind of discussions do you have with IBMers when you're here? You're a big DB2 shop, you have, you have a lot of different IBM hardware. What kind of meetings do you have with IBMers when you're here? What do you talk about? We, we, well, um, for example, I am the president of the, what's called an SAP DB2 Technical Leadership Exchange. We meet once a year in Toronto at the, at the labs. And we also meet here at, at Insight, or we'll have Where a meeting DBT tomorrow. Where DBT is developed at, in right. the Toronto Right, and Labs. so what we do is we bring in customers um, from yeah, all SAP DB2 customers, whether I was going to say across the U.S., but also we've got some international ones that participate. And we sit down with the chief architect and a lot of the uh, IBMers, and we bring in SAP and their chief architect, and we say, what is your future roadmap for SAP? Here's our problems, here's the, the things that we're running into that we really need solved. And we give them feedback and, we gi and they give us their future direction. And a lot of times what we, what we talk about one year, we'll see solved the next year or maybe on another fix pack that comes out. So we feel as, a, as not only our company Coca-Cola that we have a really good input into, into that, along with a lot of other companies. I mean, we're going there with, you know, the Bank of America's, Pepsi's there, you know, Harley Dave. So we've got a lot of big companies that are there giving their feedback directly to the people that are making the agenda with what's going to be worked on and patched going forward. And do you feel like as these companies are so focused on moving to the cloud right now and they're trying to change their business models, do you feel like they're paying uh, uh, adequate attention to the issues that uh, you guys have to deal with with your legacy infrastructure that has to be maintained for, for years going forward? I, I, think, I think they do. You know, one of the things that we've really uh, had a good relationship, we've had, really had a good relationship with IBM. We consider IBM um, a, a partner. Um, even though we're their customer. I mm -hmm. mean, they, they come in, they take the time to find out, you know, what, what we're going through and come with solutions. Um, and so, you know, it's one of these, you know, we help them out, they help us out. So we talk to their customers, but they come in and they, they make sure that they're listening to us. And honestly, I do feel that, that they do listen to us. And we've had, you know, um, we, we are all, not only are we beta uh, customers for their DB2 product, we're also data, beta testers for their, um, their storage line. So their new, their new V9000s that they rolled out, their flash units. The flash units, yeah. So we were the f one of the first customers to get those things before they even went on, on the market, and we go out and we help them 
say, hey, this is what we see. This is what's working. And we let them know when something's not working. So I, I know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you, you've been a, a beta tester for, uh, for DB2 Blue, the in-memory database. Correct. Um, what are you, how are you applying that uh, high-speed technology? So right now, what we're doing is we've been just evaluating it, um, putting it through its paces. Um, because the Coke industry has been in this flux and where we know we're moving a lot of this SAP stuff to Atlanta, um, now as my new architect role, I'm spending a lot of time in Atlanta. So I'm actually now able to help influence some of those decisions where they're making the decisions on the big platform. So I, can, I, can, I have now something to say, hey, you know what, I've played with this, I know it works. I think we really need to look at this. And so I can take it outside of my own company to the bigger Coke industry. And, and would you see, do you think the company will be using it in an analytics capacity or, or um, more to, to speed up your production uh, systems? Um, right now, the blue is only available for the analytics side, which is SAP BW. Um, but uh, IBM is looking and talking to customers as far as, you know, hey, what systems do you want us to go after next? And so, the group that I was telling you that meets in, in Toronto, we've had a lot of suggestions, a lot of conversations around target this system, target this system, because we want to see it hit the, o the OLTP side of the house, mm -hmm. where we can actually leverage it more on a day-to-day -day basis. You, you are also, uh, we were talking earlier about, about your using analytics to, for performance improvement, right. uh, uh, for actually the infrastructure, infrastructure performance improvement, something we've not, again, not discussed here the last two days. How are you applying analytics to making your data center more efficient? Well, one of the things that I, I do is I try to keep um, history. So part of our systems actually will, what we call is a performance warehouse. So you've heard of data warehouse, performance warehouse yeah. keeps all the metrics on how, how the databases are doing, how the, cat, how the SQL statements are doing, how um, the locking of records or something, maybe when, when, when records get locked. So I can see over time, over years, I can, I can query, how did I do last year compared to this year? How did I do last month compared to this month? And so as my developers are changing code, or by hardware guys are changing out hardware, I can see whether the differences that they're making are actually helping. And if they're not, I can go to them and say, hey look, this is not working. Something, something changed. So like I've been able to, to see, a, like when I see a spike on, a, on, a, on SQL statements, all of a sudden, you know, there was a particular case where all of a sudden we were getting a billion, over a billion reads in one particular hour for something and it wow. we would see it in the spike. And yeah. so I was, e I was quickly able to take, a, take that data, correlate it back into programs that changed and actually pinpoint them back if like you need to fix this code. So it seems like we, we were talking about the application portfolio before, it seems like you're taking a pragmatic approach toward value. You're tying pieces to revenue. So this accounts for 70% of our business, so you've got a sense of that, so you can understand how changes in infrastructure, support the application, support the business process, ultimately support the revenue. Uh, you talked about DB2 Blue Acceleration, I'm sorry, that's running on Z mainframe? or on, that's running on, on AIX. AIX. We're, we're running it on the AIX, so okay. Power, Power 7 and Power 8. And, and, and you've run a lot of Intel. You, you, have you played around with a little Indian? Um, we, we have. Um, when we first, when we first, um, or, oh, actually, let me, let me clarify. When you when you say little Indian, on the, are you talking about on, on the power? On power, yes. Yeah, no, no, not on the okay. power side. Yeah, I think it, no, they've because they blue acceleration, they've the, running you know, DB2 blue on power, running right. little Indian. And that was one of the you know one of the comments I made to to the IBM guys. I said you know, because I talked to a lot of the guys that are on sales and marketing, and I said that's really one of the features you really need to sell. The fact you, you're, you're probably the only box on the market right. that that can support both. And, and, and you're, and, you're, and you're, and you're, and you're, I'm a customer, and I want to spend money on hardware. I want, if I can buy one piece of hardware that can satisfy both. And you're the, a Microsoft shop, right? So right. you can run, right. you know, that those apps, and especially in analytics workloads, right. you would think that that's going to, you know, the power is going to have an advantage over, you know, Intel right. x86. But so, okay, that's sort of roadmap stuff. Right. Um, and then the Flash piece. How are you using Flash? So Flash is, is an interesting thing. You know, we, we decided to, we decided to um, 
bring in Flash just as a proof of concept. We had some performance issues on uh, some Oracle databases um, for our Manugistics software. So that supply and, or that, that demand and fulfillment piece is really important. I mean, if that thing slows down, our trucks don't move. Mm. And so we brought that in and immediately, just by plugging that stuff in, I mean, it just immediately took our response times way down. And it was a proof of concept. We went to the business and we said, we got to give that box back because, you know, they, they let us borrow it. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, you're not sending that back. How much is it going to cost us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and they literally, they literally gave up the money and they said, well, we really need two because we need one for our disaster recovery. Like, mm. They threw the money right out. Well, that's a, that confirms something that we've been saying for a while now, that Flash is really going to, it comes back to that application portfolio supporting the business. It, it's... It's going to, Flash is going to drive business value, it's going to drop right to the bottom line, and it's going to actually create interest from the lines of business. It's exactly what has happened. Right. At, uh, and, and as a matter of fact, you know, when we, when we started doing the proof of concepts on the new versions that were coming out, we went to the business and said, hey, we're going to be, they're going to be giving us these new ones. Do you want to try your software on the newer ones to see if it makes even a, a mm. bigger improvement? I mean, they threw the money out for that stuff, oh, too. I mean, it's just stuff. like, it, it sells itself. It's, all right, Andrew, I'm sorry we're out of time. Love to keep going here. Uh, but thank you for helping oh. us close out IBM Insight 2015. Really appreciate the practitioner perspective, and uh, congratulations on your promotion. All right, thank you very much. All right, you come on theCUBE, get promoted. Um, <laughs> keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest. Actually, we're back to wrap IBM Insight 2015 right after this.